What if I told you that there is one subject that if you studied that, there is an instructor out there, a very well-known instructor, who claims that knowing this one subject well is better than training 95% of the reality, self-defense, and combat sport arts that there are. I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. One thing, one subject, trumps all that training when it comes to avoiding violence. Well, I will have that quote at the very end of my interview with none other than Richard Dimitri. But before we get there, listen, if you're ready to start putting together your self-protection platform program, then go to timlarkin.com, give us your email, get your free masterclass to start putting it together for you and your family to design something that not only protects your family, but also minimizes the chance of violence ever coming into your life. Also, please subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, hit the notification bell, and make comments. That's what really gets us some traction with YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> it's funny, this, this uh, interview has been a long time coming. Uh, Rich reached out to me a couple times over the years, and we've had some exchanges, and I've always found him very thoughtful, um, interesting, a great sense of humor. He uh, interviewed me for an article that he was doing a while back on uh, various self-protection um, guys in the industry, which kind of gave me the impetus for what I'm doing right now. I'm actually really enjoying this, so I, I give him credit for that because it got me thinking along those lines. Uh, I've been wanting to interview him. He's a very interesting guy. He's been through a lot, uh, professionally and personally. Um, he's very humble about where he's at today. Um, great instructor and has some amazing insights really when it comes to, uh, training in particular, he, uh, really covers some amazing content on training women and what's important and what's not important. And actually got me to rethink some of the things I'm doing. And I'm going to reach out to, uh, Chris, um, and Rich from safe international. Uh, and talk to them a little bit more about if I could borrow some of their material next time I am on uh, training women. So anyways, this interview goes for, uh, you know, goes, goes for a while and he really covers a wide variety of topics. Very interesting guy. Um, <clears throat> you'll see, you know, the travels that he's been through, the challenges he's had, um, you know, as a, as a self-protection specialist through the years i've had my ups and downs in my uh industry and rich certainly had his and he openly shares this which i think is interesting but there's a lot of great content on here about probably misconceptions that you had you know why do people focus in this one area when really they should be focusing on another area if they want true self-protection so again i try to keep these interesting and focused and find you subject matter experts that don't give the same message all the time and uh, I really hit the jackpot with uh, this one with Rich because I didn't, I had no expectation of where this was going to go. And this is an organic conversation that he and I had. And it was just, I was just really happy we were capturing it. So I hope you enjoy my interview with Richard Dimitri. Rich, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you haven't gone off on me yet because this is the third time we've been doing this by technically. So, so no, Rich I'm literally practices de escalation. Um, <laughs> for you guys that don't know, we have done this interview a couple of times. We just had some gold that we had, and uh, I have to make him say it all over again. So, <laughs> anyways, it's been it's been great. So, what we what we were talking about um, is couple of things the state of the industry where we're at today and the evolution you know from like you know both you and i started like in really in the 90s and um, right. uh, you know before exactly. i mean we trained before that but but really like the, the 90s approach and then how it's evolved to, to now and, and and where you think the industry is now and then also uh, you know i there's other things i want to talk about the other main thing i want to talk about is your evolution because your evolution has been really interesting and i, I really want people to hear that because i think a lot of people think we just we, we, we're just these stoic individuals that just that we do the same thing all the time. Nothing ever affects us and we don't change our perspectives. And yeah. and it's really cool to see the evolution of, of a lot of the guys in the industry and, and uh, yours in particular has been great. So um, where do you think like, like from where from where you started in the old days, you know, when we, we started this and where the industry is going now? Um, 
are, are you, is it hopeful for you, positive for you, or are you you're concerned? No, it, um, it, bit of both. Um, no, I'm hopeful because I, I see a change. I see an evolutionary process uh, uh, in, in, in many different branches. I see people starting to understand more and more the differences, and this is the most critical part, between self-defense, combatives, martial arts, both traditional and sport, uh, uh, right? And so these are all very distinct animals, like tennis, badminton, ping pong, I always say, are distinct games and sports. So are these things distinct. Just because a certain set of tools from one is interjectable into another doesn't make one good for the other. So so the fact that people are now able to distinguish the difference, well, not everyone, obviously, because there's still that in the industry, um, but more and more people are starting to distinct, distinguish the differences. And because if they don't, it makes a huge disservice to the general population who are looking for self-defense. And that's the misrepresentation of what we or you are teaching. So if I'm, I claim to teach violence prevention, self-defense or pure applied self-defense, but you come to me and then you see I'm wearing a gi and we're working on mats and we're doing techniques and spashing pads and we're not really doing self-defense. We're doing a tiny aspect of self-defense. We're doing some physical portion of self-defense, but that's, that's such a, a tiny, tiny fragmented piece of the pie. Of that's such a vast pie that is self-defense and violence that you're not really teaching self-defense. Combatives is not self-defense because it's combatives. The term is combative. As a matter of fact, I think Lee Morrison himself, when he was quoted to define combatives, he said combatives is fucking combatives. It's fight. It's that's what it is. Yep. Right. That's what it is. And I, I agree. Uh, uh, but that's not self-defense. <laughs> it's not self-defense. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of people who take combatives will look down on the true aspects of self-defense because it, it takes away from the machismo, the, the, the toughness, the, the anger, the, the, the John Wick wannabes in your fantasy land of your life that you can't manifest in reality. So you get to do it a few hours a week every night when you go hit the pads, right? And so it's very, very different. Now, self-defense, my, my mother, the average housewife of 14 year old girl, uh, I won't send my 10 year old boy to, to learn self defense from a combatives instructor not in a million years. Not a, he's better off without any training whatsoever. And figure it out on your own, man. You'll get there. You don't really. <laughs> so um, I see that people are recognizing that, which is a good thing. And the other aspect, sorry, you were going to say something? No, no, no. Keep, keep going. Um, the other aspect evolutionary aspect is in the self-defense world itself um, because I'm, I don't really follow the, the, the sport world. Uh, I just watch certain fights from a scientific perspective enjoyment and not from a he won, she won, they won, who I don't even know the names of most of the people. Um, so, so, but from a self-defense perspective, pure and applied, there has to be an understanding of the origins, the roots. Why? How did we get here? What's causing this? Uh, uh, if you look at down into the martial arts when they were first designed for survival, the Musashis, the Sun Tzus, the blah, 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 and you look at the philosophical aspects and everything you were here, know thy enemy and you will win a thousand battles and all of that stuff. There's, there's, know thy enemy isn't about you know, inviting them for tea and crumpets. It's about understanding the psychological implication, behavioral implications, mentality, strategic. Why are they doing what they're doing? So that I can be able to defend and protect. Because if I'm just going blindly, I don't know. If, if I'm going to, even if from a sport aspect, if I'm going to fight a guy in three months, I'm going to, I want to know everything about this guy I can, don't I? What does he do? When does he wake up? What's his training like? When I see his fights, I want to see every one of his fights. I want to see him train right now. I'm going to send somebody over there, videotape him training. Bring that back to me. Let me see. And let me, okay, so this is what I'm dealing with. Same thing here. So, so the mental health aspects, and I think more and poor, more, more and poor people are starting to recognize that the true nature of self-defense 
is not in the band-aid approach anymore. It's not in the beat the bad guy up, let's stomp them to death. That it comes in the prevention and the recognition of what constitutes a, a bad guy, their modus operandi, and how what can I do to A, prevent it and B, circumvent it if it is happening? And what are my what you right? And so, and then you start to find out that real world violence, as opposed to what most people teach as self-defense violence, is antisocial in nature. Whereas most people in the self-defense world today still are teaching against social violence. Most of it is against social violence. The, the person who's grabbed you, the person in your face, the person who's mouthing off, you're at a bar, you're at a bus stop, let's do a scenario in your car, let's do a scenario here, let's do a scenario there, when the reality is 97% of women who are murdered are murdered by uh, 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 their partner, uh, an intimate partner, and in their own home. Right. It's not a bus stop. It's not the guy with the hoodie and the tattoos in the alley that you see 99 percent of every women's self-defense course. She's beating up some tattooed guy in an alley wearing a hoodie and who's got a knife and who's waiting for her. First question, why the fuck are you going into the alley? Second so, question. So. Um, right. That that represents what you're seeing there, about 10 percent of violence. That's it. Ten percent. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny you're saying that. I saw, <clears throat> I recently did a video on um, uh, a commercial that uh, Beretta did. And, it, you oh, know, yeah. everything was nice about the commercial. I mean, I really, it was really well produced. It was there and it gave the absolute wrong message, meaning uh, the, the woman was, it, it shows her, well, the first thing, she's coming out of the back of a, a look like a, like a, maybe a dance building or something. She's carrying her stuff and she goes right in this super dark parking lot right away by herself and she and yeah they, they show that she's got the situational awareness she's looking around and everything and then you see the creepy guys come in the parking lot and and, and they're, they're they're coming in and then you know they attack and as they're attacking that's when they flash to her all her training and the training is right. good i had no problem with the training they're, they're doing you know she did firearms training and she did you know some combatives training but the whole point was is completely avoidable meaning it was there the whole thing is like you would think if somebody was trained like that they would they wouldn't you, be doing that yeah and, and the main thing is like and, and I love that's what, hollywood I, isn't it exactly and i love what he's, and you know what it works it, it works so it motivates people the vast majority of people that i show the, the commercial to especially women they're like, yeah that's what i want i go really that's what you want you know and then we walk back and we talk about it and we go listen i would hope that if i've trained somebody that they would recognize that this that the choice they're about to make is one that is is willingly putting themselves in uh, a yeah. risk situation, a high risk situation. Why do that to yourself? You know, because you understand what it's that. I, what's really interesting is the other thing you just said about women is Thank so you. key, meaning they have to overcome the fact that this is somebody they know. It's somebody they have some sort of a relationship with, you know, yeah. either familiar or a friend or somebody who's just all of a sudden they're, they're starting an assault and they have right. to mentally overcome that. And, you know, they're not, you have to prepare people for stuff like that. And the preparation really has nothing to do with punching and kicking. Nothing. And zero, zero. And, and that's the dirty little secret that people don't like to talk about. No. And, you know, it's easy for us to, I tell people all the time, I, I, I'm to the point now with my civilian clients that the, whatever you want to call it, the combatives part of it, the actual, you know, learning to use violence. Right. Is couched as i remember because i just did a seminar yesterday and, and i told that that group i go you're doing this work on the mat right now because i want you to know what you have to do to a human being if you fail in all of the escalation and all the preventive stuff before you know and this will reinforce those things and what i'm looking for you guys now and, and this is not this is not tim larkin of like 1993 uh you know because you know I, I that was the kick-ass operator you know doing all this stuff uh, you know, my whole thing is now, it, my whole thing now is like, listen, I want you to make behavioral change. I hope you never have to use this information, right? But they have to understand what, what the ramifications are if they make a, a bad decision, you know, they continue to do. And, and, you know, I remember when you and I were talking, you know, on the last, the last time around you, your approach with women that, that you've been taking and you've been working with Chris on that. Um, it, it's, it's really, 
I just, I reached out to Chris after, because, you know, I want to, I I'm right in the middle of doing a book and I want to, you know, use your guys approach, giving you guys obviously the credit and everything, but it's just, it's stellar. But can you explain a little bit about how you approach, uh, women in self-protection? Well, it's, it's, uh, um, the approach, the whole thing is, is they have to recognize it's not just women, honestly speaking, everyone, 90% of victims of violence, um, regardless of their gender or age, is, are committed by people they know. That's 90% of victims, right? Um, an example, you bring up Chris. I worked for Chris on contract uh, for Safe International. I do a lot of work for him. For starters, he lost his voice over a decade ago. It's a neurological disorder. So um, he, you know, I, I do his certifications and stuff. Um, but I also worked for him for his company, working in high schools. Right. And wow. working with him in high schools, which at the time he had over 80 high schools uh, that we were working with, between literally two provinces, mainly the greater Toronto area. Um, between my wife and I, who also taught for Chris, in a five-year period, between her and I combined, we would see an average of approximately 150 to 300, let's say 225, different 14 to 15-year-old teenagers every week, every week. So at any given week, we could be teaching anywhere between two to five classes a day with 25 to 30 students in each class, five days a week, right? Um, and it was pure and applied self-defense. So that's five hours. Some of them was only four hours. Out of those five hours, one of these hours is an attack day where they get to just beat the crap out of a padded guy. Right. Um, and so in five years, we've had roughly about 44, 45 teenagers, 99% of them girls, who have stepped up and came out after class and divulged to either myself or my wife that they were being victimized victimized, abused, they've been raped, uh, whether the victim, whether the assault was psychological, emotional, sexual, physical, uh, right? It was abuse, they were going through hell or they had gone and it had happened a while back or a month ago or whatever. Out of the 44 girls, two of them, it was a stranger. Wow. One, it was in an alleyway, I grabbed her. Another one, it was, again, a stranger thing out in the street somewhere in a um, subway or whatever. The other 42, mom, dad, uncle, coach, my best friend's brother, boyfriend, uh, a boss, it, it went on and on and on the list. These were the people committing the crimes and the violence. And it ranged from psychological, like I said, and emotional abuse and neglect and to physical and sexual, you name it, it was in there. None of these girls, not a single one of these girls where they were at or at the time that the situation was happening, would anything that I've ever seen being taught in any Krav Maga, combative, you name it, would have helped any of these girls. Not nothing. Unless you have a specific instructor out there who's nameless and he's doing his thing and He's interjected as if we just haven't heard of him, perhaps, maybe, but not that I have heard of. Now, that doesn't mean anything because I'm one guy in billions on planet Earth, <laughs> right? right? So, and my experience is anecdotal. I admit that. However, it's scarce. I, not from my, right? And I've been in this industry for my whole life. So, so it's somebody they knew and there's nothing physical they could have done about it. You can't ask a 14-year-old girl who has been... Uh, uh, groomed by her grandfather since she was two years old to all of a sudden knee him in the balls, throw an elbow, hammer fist him, or whatever it is, arm bar, whatever technique in your mind that you think is, that's not going to do a finger, even eye gouge, shredder, there's nothing. She's it's, it's not going to do it. Why? We're not at that point. We're way beyond. The amount of, right, and she loves her grandfather. He wasn't punching her. He was sexually abusing her in a, not in a violent way either. And at the same time, what's he doing to her? He's 
showering her with all kinds of other stuff, gifts. You can stay up at night and watch TV late and I'll scratch your back, everything. So I love grandpa. And then you tell the kids, hey, you got to tell mom and dad if this is happening. Well, the mom and dad told me that if this somebody's touching me there, they're going to kill him or send him to jail. I don't want grandpa to go to jail or to die. I love grandpa. I know it's wrong now, but fuck me. What a psychological mess. Why? Because when I was two, I didn't know it was wrong and nobody told me it was wrong. And even if you did, I wouldn't understand it. I'm two. And that's when he was started doing it to me. And whether you do this to my genitals or you do this to my arm or my back to a two-year-old, they don't understand sex and taboos and dogmas. It just fucking feels good. So, but when grandpa says to you, hey, don't tell mom and dad that I let you stay up late at night a couple of extra hours or they're not going to let us do that anymore. That's our little secret, right? Yeah, yeah, grandpa. Don't tell mom and dad that I give you extra dessert because then they're not going to let us have extra dessert. That's our little secret. Yeah. Don't tell mom and dad I scratch you at night all over and make you feel good because that's what they're not going to let it. Right. So he amalgamates that. Now the right and wrong is it's a blur. But the kid's turning six now, five, six. Mom and dad is starting to say and showing the doll and nobody should touch you here and this, that, and the other thing. It's starting to register. Oh, but fucking grandpa's been doing it. But it feels good. I don't want him to stop. I like it. But mom and dad are saying it's wrong. What's that doing to a fucking child, man? Could you imagine the trauma, the, co the cognitive dissonance of a seven-year-old or a six-year-old that's been groomed since two and hasn't received any information or the information, they didn't get it, but all of a sudden now that they're connecting the dots and then mom and dad is saying, tell us and we'll fucking, dad wants to kill the guy and mom wants to throw him in jail and they're going, but, but mom, it's your dad. <laughs> right? Or whatever. That's a mess for a child. And so that, it, it, you, that child grows up to be 13, 14, all of a sudden sits in, in a martial arts or self-defense class at some high school or goes to a combatives class and they're like, no, no, step out and bam, boom, boom. They're sitting there going, oh, that's good. I get to put my anger out, but shit, man, I ain't never doing that to grandpa or to my uncle or to my husband who's been abusing me for the last seven years or two. Whoever their abuser is, they're not going to go home and translate that. Why? It's not translatable. You didn't reach them here. You just gave them a physical outlet to release their anger. You didn't give them any tools other than some that will potentially land them in fucking jail should they explode and do what you taught them. Why? Because, you know, there's, there's nothing. You just, right? And, and that's such a small minority that will get to that point. So um, in terms of females... There's that understanding, first and foremost, and then it's, it's, it's all about mindset. It's all about um, going back home. At the end of the day, self-defense, everybody asks self-defense is a legal term. Yeah, it is. It's a legal term. Fuck the legal term. That's not why I'm not learning it for legal term. I'm learning it. To, tell me what to do, man. So self-defense, what it is, it's about love at the end of the day. And I'm not a woke guy. Right. whatever that means <laughs> okay it's just um it's it's and what i mean by that is i love my mom my dad they're still alive my wife love her my kid i love him they love me back if anything were to happen to my kid it's the end of my world i'm a done man there's no i'm not surviving that one my parents okay i get it why it's the end they're, 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 they've gotten to the stage. We've got another, you know, uh, if we're lucky, 20 years. Right. If we're not that lucky, five, six, seven, I don't know. I'm, it's coming. We get it, right? But they're my, they're my anchors. They're what I live for, who I live for. They're my clan. If anything were to happen to me, whatever I would feel when it would happen to them, they would feel if it happened to me. I have now a responsibility to the people I love. What is that responsibility? One, to always come home safe. To the best of my ability, my ability, what I can control. I can't control a drunk driver. I can't control several things, right? I can't control certain things so that I don't promise. But what I can control, I owe it to them to come home safely. So I have to make the right decisions 
at the end of the day, emotional cycle, whatever they are, that's going to get me back home hugging my folks, my, my family, right? To get me to my life the way I knew it before an incident found me. So that's one. Two, the love part gets me through that, gets me through the fear. It gets me through the freeze or the fawn or the... Uh, uh, all the stages of the, the adrenal stress condition phase that are triggered by an individual's past traumatic events, whatever they may be, that causes them to freeze, fight, please, and fawn, or uh, uh, fight, flight, freeze. What was the fourth one again? Um, I keep forgetting. Um, what, you get the point. Yeah. So, yeah. right. So, those trigger points are rooted from trauma. If I fight too early, and I'm not intelligent enough to, to strategize and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I function strictly out of emotion, be it anger or revenge or whatever. Recently, the case of the mixed martial arts guy who went and shot. Yeah. Right? I yeah. get it. I'm on his side. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But you got the right brain, you got the left brain. He went 100% emotional. Yep. I'm not going to spread on how to kill people here online and stuff, but brother, there's ways of doing that, that that's not going to land you where you are today. And you yeah. could have achieved it by shooting the right person, not the wrong person. Anyway, right? We saw a video of a guy in court in the 80s who waited for the guy who, who molested his child, pull out a gun on live camera and shoot the guy, boom, in the head, and he got away scot-free on mental, yeah. uh, right, this, uh, all that stuff. So if you're too emotional and you jump to the fight conclusion right away, it could still get you in a world of trouble or potentially even killed. Guys in your face, boom, I hit the guy. Oh, shit, I didn't notice the six friends that are armed that are standing right behind him. Uh oh, okay. right? So that's a facetious point of view, but right? So, so at the end of the day, when we talk about the love and what I owe my family, I owe them to come home safe on the things I can control. I also owe them to be the best version and the healthiest version of myself I can be. So I have to make those choices too. Why? Well, my kid is 10 years old. I'm 52. When he's going to be 20, I'm going to be 62, right? So I, got, I do that math. And I look at the math and I go, my parents had me young. I love my parents. They would have fucking wrecked me if they died in my 30s. Right. I, I'm 52 and I dread the day they're going to go. So if I feel that way, I can't imagine what my kid's going to feel like as we get older and he watches me get older. So I owe him to get older in the best shape, best health, both mental and physical I can. Why? Because my misery, my pains are also theirs if they truly love me, just as theirs are mine because I love them. So if I, we teach girls, especially the younger ones, you don't have a lot of time to teach. It's not about the physicality. It's not about grab them this way, put your foot here. Fuck if they're going to remember all that when their uncle's trying to strangle them to death at one o'clock in the morning after beating their aunt with a hammer in the room next door, which is a true story. So, and that's a 14 year old girl. So that girl's not remembering left from right. That girl isn't remembering a physical technique. If you look at, and sorry, I jump everywhere. And I know we mentioned in the first yeah, one. You're doing great, man. This right, is awesome. I, right. I'm neurodivergent. So ADHD. <laughs> um, if we had taught physical techniques, she would not have survived. If we spent five days on spashing pads and hammer fists and buck and roll, how many times do we see the buck and roll as an absolute must taught in rape prevention classes for women? It, it's like it's on, in almost every single one of them. Buck, roll, but the reality is, is yeah, you're learning how to buck and roll in a gym. This girl had her uncle mounted on top of her who happened to be a mixed martial arts amateur fighter to begin with, jacked on cocaine. He just beat her aunt to death with a hammer, bursts into her room at one o'clock in the morning. So she wakes up going, what the hell is going on? Just to see her uncle, who in a million years, she would have never thought would have ever done this because the, the, the very same day, they all went out and had a wonderful day, right? She was, she was sleeping over at her aunt's house. So this guy busts in. So she wakes up, you have that shock. 
Now, who's going to get up and start fighting at 14 years old when their uncle, your brain's going, what's going on here? By the time she's halfway through the sentence of what the fuck's going on here, he's on top of her and he bashed her head on the back of her bed. She fell off. He mounted her and she's in between a wall and her bed. So you buck, he does this. He puts his hand on the wall. He, there's a bed. He's not going anywhere. You could be bugging Hoist Gracie or Hicks and Gracie. You're not going to buck and roll anybody when there's a wall in a bed. It's not happening for you, man. Why? Because logistics and environment and you're in a bedroom. You're not in a bar or on a mat. Now, buck and roll is not happening. Hammer fist isn't happening. She wanted to give up about a thousand times during this assault where he's literally trying to rape and murder her to the point where he tied both of her hands with zip ties and shoved socks rolled up that he had on him so it was premeditated down her throat, right? Strategy, the whole thing, she wants to give up, she doesn't. What does she hear? She hears my wife's words in her ears when she wanted to give up and die. You want to see her mom again? How are your parents going to feel if they find your body? How are they going to feel if they're told, hey, we, there's a, you know, we haven't seen your girl in three days and we found a body in a ditch. Imagine how you would feel if they told you about your mother. You want to see them again? Whoever's doing whatever to you, whoever's on top of you has become an obstacle between you and the people you love. You want to hug them again to get through that. Doesn't matter who they are. Get through that person to get to the other side. And that's what kept her going. Just that thought of everybody she loved. She goes, every time I wanted to give up and die, I remember Pam's words going, oh, you want to hug your, I want to see my mom. No, you're not, fuck off, get off. You're not going to let, you're not stopping me from seeing my mom. So it's a state of mind that aids a survivor get through horrific events. Any horrific event, really, you go down to, to the, the, the Holocaust. What, what was the difference between the people that would die out and the people who survived? Yeah, Love. I hope. Yep. At the end of the day, it was love. The people who succumbed were the people who had hope and things like, oh, maybe by Christmas, the war will be over. Christmas came, it wasn't over. Half a dozen people died, oh, by Easter, the war, or by this, by that. And when their hopes weren't met, they, they would give up, right? But the people who made it out is like, I knew my son was out there somewhere waiting for me. I knew my wife was out there somewhere waiting for me. I had to see my blah, 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 blah. There's no, they're the people who made it. And they made it through the utmost worst of condition, malnutrition, famine. I mean, you're talking about working out in freezing weather, no shoes and their feet were falling upright and all kinds of stuff and beatings and uh, uh, watching their loved ones being killed and everybody around them dying. Yet they made it through. Books have been written about the subject matter, right? No. So the survivability of every human being, regardless, and this transcends culture, religion, social, economical background, because self-defense is not a system. It's not a style. Nobody owns self-defense. You can't own that shit. It's not ownable. It's a human thing and process. I don't own the psychology of human behavior or forensics or the statistics on women getting murdered. I don't own any of that. I don't own mental health or I, I don't own the fact that trauma is the cause root of, but I understand it and I know it. And if anybody does the work, they're going to come up with the same thing because that's self-defense. It transcends jobs. It tra it's a human thing. It transcends age and gender and it transcends culture, all of it. And if you go down to the core root of the human thing, then you can teach anyone self-defense. They're in a wheelchair, they're blind, uh, they've got psychological issue, whatever it is, I could teach, we, we, why? Because you're human, you have the right to defend yourself and you've got tools that people have been using since people were people and became people. And so we can work with that. But if I go by system and style or athletics, or technical applications and fine motor skill or rule, blah, 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 right? any of that stuff, then I we now narrow it down to very, very limited amount of people. And even then we're not really giving them the real thing. That's like teaching self-defense with a baseball bat or a tennis racket. Yeah, this is a swing, this is a swing. I'm gonna teach you how to use it to bash people on the head. Good, but it's not self-defense. I can pull up my racket and hit you just because I take tennis lessons and you've taught me a couple of you know, extrema swipes with my tennis racket. That's, a, that's not self-defense at the end of the day. That's you knowing how to fight with a racket. So very, very different. Uh, so 
in terms of reaching the average human being, you got to teach them from a human perspective. And that comes down to understanding what constitutes a predator, who are the bad guys, who do they victimize, why, how, the reasons, right? How did they become a bad guy? Can we stop this process from happening? Yeah, we can actually. We can stop a lot of it, not all of it, but a good chunk of it could be stopped dead in its roots. I've always been interested in outbirthing violence, not the Band-Aid approach, even back in the 90s. But I wasn't, not one, I wasn't smart enough to, or, 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 you know, visionary enough. And two, I didn't even recognize my own mental issues that made me the way I was and made me teach the way I did, which in, for all intents and purposes, I shouldn't have really been teaching. It, not pure and applied self-defense. The combatives aspect, sure. But even then, it's, it, it's, it wasn't a very healthy approach. It was as healthy as can be because I happen to have empathy, luckily. I've seen so many other instructors that don't have empathy oh. and they teach from a very, very, well, non-empathic, let's say, level. So, um, and that's, 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 that's crazy because you have angry people with misdirected anger teaching other angry people with misdirected anger, right? And now they're looking up to you. And then you have to fight your own insecurities every single day in front of these people. So what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to make yourself superior to them. Yep. Why? Because if I'm superior, you can't question me. If I'm superior, right? If you're scared of me, you're not going to ask me to spar or do a drill or uh, where I might right, have to actually show my true self or expose my real uh, abilities or not. So so you hide behind that. That happened. And that happened to me, man. I, well, I remember getting my first black belt and fucking I didn't know how to fight. But I was told I did, and I was, and I paid money, and I went for so long, but I was still scared, and I, shit. <laughs> but I can't act scared. Why? Because everybody's supposed to be scared of me now. So what do I do? I gotta act tough now. Yep. I gotta, I gotta put on the mask. I gotta pretend. I gotta hide that insecurity. You can't hide an insecurity. So what do you do? You overcompensate. You become a bit arrogant. You become a bit standoffish. You become a bit back off, man. But don't fuck with so-and-so. But ever, anybody ever seen him fight? Not really. Yeah. Right? So uh, it's, it's it, anyway, um, reaching the people on that level has been extremely successful um, because at the end of the day, it's about mindset. Self-defense is about prevention. I don't want it to happen to me, right? A lot of people, it's almost like they look for it once they learn self-defense, but that's not self-defense. It's kind of like science and pseudoscience. You can't call it science if it's not science. It's kind of the same thing here. It's, 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 it's not, if it's not about understanding how not to have it happen to me and my family, and, and if I can spot it, prevent it, circumvent it, the physical becomes the last resort. And at the end of the day, the reality is, the stark, hard reality is, if it's a real self-defense situation, 90% of the time, it won't. there's nothing you could have done about it physically anyway. If it got to the point where it got physical, you were murdered or they nailed you from behind. They, they succeeded because they didn't come up to you and go, hey, man. Or, or they didn't mouth off. You were groomed, right? It's your, even men, men, 90, over 90% 90 of men who are murdered outside of gangs, outside of that lifestyle, right? Or if I'm a cop or you live the life where, right? just average men, your average civilian male, 90% of these people who are murdered are murdered by people they know. It's a family member or a coworker or a best friend or a business partner. And 100% of the time you're dealing with two reasons, money or somebody that you is in your way because you want something like you're married and that person is in the way of that woman. And you think that if I kill them, I'm going to have that. It literally comes down to that. The motives are 
financial gain and uh, love. Right. Some form of intimacy or ownership of another human beings, right? So it's not the mugger in the street. The mugger in the street, you give him your money, he's going to fuck off nine out of 10 times. You don't need to bash him. So that takes care of that part of the antisocial violence. Who else is coming at you in the streets for violence? Thugs, drunks, road rage. And these are all social violence situations. All of them. If it's social violence, 10 out of 10 times, you can talk your way out of it. Yeah. Not nine, not eight, 10. Why? I didn't leave the house that day looking for a victim. I found myself in this situation circumstantially. If I left the house that day looking for a victim, that becomes antisocial violence. That's an antisocial personality disorder that is manifesting itself violently into the world. Poof. And so that's very, very different than the person who's in your face going, hey, he's fucking blah, blah, whatever they're saying. Now, that could also be an antisocial, but you need to figure it out. You can't just pop everybody who's mouthing off at you. Why? Because we have a moral, ethical, unless you don't have empathy, in that case, I can't tell you what to do. You're going to do it anyway, no matter what, because you're a fucking asshole and you don't have empathy. You, you're that person. <laughs> then you, you're an antisocial personality disorder type right there. If you lack empathy, if your empathy is limited, or non-existent or selective, you fall under a category of antisocial personality disorder. You fall under the categories of narcissists and sociopathy and Machiavellians, right? You're getting into that realm now. Now, these people, the, 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 all the ones I just mentioned are literally products of abuse, untreated abuse. And then they turned 18. And once you turn 18, 19, and the brain starts to fully develop into adulthood, you are no longer, no sociopath or malignant narcissist or Machiavellian has ever been cured, for lack of a better word, or given the tools to find. They're not there. They're not, first of all, they're not going to seek help because they don't think they need help. That's a whole other story. You, you're not, right? You can't tell a narcissist they're a narcissist. It, it's, it's completely yeah. counterproductive. So, <clears throat> so now you've got that realm. But if you're dealing with a good person having a bad day, that is not, doesn't fall under the antisocial personality disorder type. There's, that situation should never go physical, ever in a million years. Why? They have an issue they want resolved. That's why they're in your face. Now, the fact that they're being... Uh, 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 aggressive and profane and, and disrespectful is due to the fact that they have all of that shit and they, they haven't dealt with it yet. They, don't, they have no place to put it. They haven't dealt with stuff that happened who knows when and it's all inside here. They're either pretending it doesn't exist or they're doing something at night to whatever, right? They're coping. These are people coping. And so you're dealing with a coper like yourself You've both got this misdirected anger. You're going to clash. You're going to say the wrong thing. And you're going to end up in a physical confrontation. And there's no reason to feel proud of winning or beating up any of these people ever. Because at the end of the day, if you want to measure your skill as a fighter, you're only as good as who you fought. Who the fuck did you fight? A bunch of drunks at a bar? A bunch of blah, blah. Who the fuck did you fight? What makes I'm not a good fighter. I step in the ring today with any UFC guy, even a 15 year old kid who trains five times a week will kick my ass today in the fucking ring. I, I'm not there. I'm 52. I'm all busted up. I'm old. I'm out of shape. I'm not that guy. I'm not angry. I have nothing to prove. I've got no hunger to step in there. They're going to meet meat out of me. Right. So it's right. Where are we in here and here? Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a, no, no, you're actually you're actually right. It, it, so it it's basically what I'm hearing is, and it's it's something I've kind of come to a similar conclusion with. It's just it's really interesting to hear this because my evolution, same thing. I, I've really realized what I really need to teach people is to recognize human nature and yeah. to understand human nature. That's your best self protection because, yeah. like you said, a, a human having a bad day. You have to humanize yourself. And one of the things that, that, that struck with me was years ago, um, 
I, I had a buddy who owned, uh, he, he was, a, he was a great manager of like nightclubs, bars, strip clubs. He was just, he was really well known for that. And he went into one, uh, in particular here in Vegas that had a lot of issues, you know, a lot of aggressive stuff that the, the bouncers were amazing. They're amazing fighters. Uh, very, very good. And this guy came in and he's, you know, definitely had those credentials, but he changed everything. And he did one simple thing. Mm-hmm. Every person that came through the door, he instructed every one of his guys and he had a whole class on it, how to greet them. He fi- they physically greeted them. They looked them in the eyes, they shook hands and they told him, I hope you have a great night. That immediately humanized his staff to the, the, the clients coming in. So then when they had, when they had an issue, they'd come in and now the same guy would put his hand on his shoulder. And the first thing was the guy would look back and he goes, Oh, this is another human. I'd met him. And all of a sudden it just, yes, now, you know, there obviously were those exceptions, but it, it could took care of over 90% of the incidences that they had just by Ooh. that simple act of, right. Hey, I'm a human. I want you to have a good time. Please just, you know, obey our rules and stuff. And that was it. Yeah. And, and it's simple stuff. And again, I get it. It's not sexy. It's not the cool moves. It's not all the stuff that you and I did in our early age. Um, but it's, it, it is truly doing your clients the biggest service you can ever do is, is Absolutely. that they start to, to recognize that. And uh, it's, it's interesting to hear your, your evolution to that point and, and, and where you're at. And it's, it's funny. It's, it's what, what you're really doing is, you're educating people to understand they, they don't understand what violence is when they choose to respond with violence. Um, that's a, that's a, it's a luxury and it's also a fast track in the legal system. Um, yeah, or the, the revenge hard, system. Yeah. The hard it's, part it's, is, is that, that, that rare black swan event where they're devoid of choice and they're facing grievous bodily harm, you know, coming in and then they have to get in there. I, this is between me and getting back to my, the people I love. And when you have that, when you, if you can get the two, aligned um it's just they you you've just done for your client the greatest service you can because it's literally minimized uh as much as possible the chance that that violence is going to come into their life yeah and, greatly it's yeah. It, not just the recognition but the understanding of the cost and and the fact that if if you have empathy the guilt involved later yeah right and 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 the potential lawsuits and the revenge factor. There, there's no human being on earth, I believe, even the Dalai Lama, that if you were to wrong him, that they're not going to feel the autonomic urge to want to revenge, yep. to hurt you back, for you to hurt. They're going to want, they won't act on it necessarily. But that's the thing with revenge is every human being on earth will feel it, especially in the heat of the moment as right in the core moment, but only 50% of us roughly are going to act on it. Whereas the other 50% either won't because either a they're pacifists or it'll pass by and time heals all wounds or whatever, whatever reason, or they're, they're, they're afraid or, Whatever, they'll feel it and they'll deal with their whole life. They're going to want it, but they're never going to act on it either. There's those types as well. But the urge will always come up and 50% of people will act on it while 50% won't. And that's fucking huge. That's a big risk to take if we're looking at the violence that 90% of people in the self-defense and martial arts world train for, which is street violence, right? If it's a street violence situation, then you're dealing with A, most of the time, it's a stranger. I don't know you. You don't know me. We don't know each other. Or we know each other from, I've come to this bar uh, for the last four years. I've seen this guy around several times. I know his name is Dan because I've heard people call him that. Right? It, but you don't fucking know the guy. It's just that. The right. level of acquaintance can drop to that. So you're looking at that type of situation, a street situation, most of street violence occurs within what a five kilometer mile radius from where both parties live. Yeah. Even yeah. serial killers commit within a certain realm from where they live. Right. So it's, it's gotta be close to fucking home. What are the odds 
that no matter what happens between the both of us tonight on a physical level, win or lose, that we're going to potentially one day run into each other again somewhere. A mall, a gas station, a restaurant. Now, what if I'm with my kid and he's with three of his friends and they just came out of a bar celebrating some fucking hockey game they watched or whatever. And I came out of a movie theater with my kid and he sees me, he recognizes me, but I don't recognize him. I don't recognize him because fuck him. I'm the one who beat him up. I got into a stupid bar fight. I don't remember it. He recognized me because I beat him up. And he's like, fuck that guy. And he's not going to forget my face. Right. So, and he goes, oh shit, that's the fucking guy who blah, blah, blah. 50, 50 chance he gets in my face with his buddies now. And I got my kid to worry about. Yep. And he's yeah. drunk. 50-50 chance that if he does get in my face, he might not get in my face. He might come at me from behind. An ambush. Which happened to somebody I know that I went to college with. Which is the equivalent of, uh, in the States, uh, high school. Right? The uh, higher level of grade right. 12 or whatever it was. Right? So, this guy's like 19 years old at the time. Him and a bunch of his friends are at a bar. They're hanging out. He goes to the bar to buy drinks, bumps a guy. Long story short, they have a few words. They start shoving each other. The bouncer's like, fuck that. If you're going to beat the shit out of each other, do it outside. <laughs> Throws them both out. The other guy got thrown out by himself. His friends didn't see the situation. He ended up outside alone with my acquaintance. I'm not going to call him a friend because he's not a friend. I've never right? But the guy's friends went out with him. Two of his friends went out with him. So it's three on one. And they beat up the guy. They didn't destroy him. He didn't go to the hospital. It was a drunken fight. So busted lip, bleeding nose, bruised ribs, right? You shake it off, you go home. But seven months later, the original guy that he got into a scuffle with, right? He's sitting outside. Uh, 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 the guy who got beaten up is sitting outside a Burger King at about 1130 midnight with a couple of friends on St. Catherine Street. And outside, the, the, next to the Burger King was a movie theater called The Lowe's. So he's coming out of the movie theater one night, late show, with his girlfriend. Doesn't see the guy. Guy sees him. Goes behind him. They're walking down the street, hand in hand. Goes behind the guy. Stabs both of them from the back. No hey man. No duel. No time to jam or grab or do anything. You just... And I'm talking about sewing machines, not just him. He's stabbing both him and his girlfriend. They're both turning around, and then he takes off, just right in the crowd. My acquaintance wakes up in the hospital a couple of days later or the day after or whatever. He survived, but his girlfriend died. His girlfriend died because of a drunken fight he got into that he could have de-escalated that did not need to happen. Seven months earlier, he couldn't even remember the fight or the guy couldn't give a description. Nobody saw nothing. The guy got away scot-free, never saw nothing, right? So violence is not just coming after you, right? I fuck up a guy in a fight and I put my foot on his chest, I won. I go have a few drinks with my buddy. What happens after that? That's the revenge part. Then you got the people who won't take revenge that way, but we spoke about it, you brought it up legally. Yeah. You got that world of hell. Huh? You, that's a whole other. That's a whole other animal. But that's also very dependent on where, when, who, countries, law, all kinds yeah. of stuff. So on a general, on, on a general level, in terms of the the, the pure applied self defense part, it's not about street violence. As we say, that's ten percent. Out of that ten percent, only ten percent of that ten percent is going to go to to violence. The other 90 doesn't have to. If people knew how to de-escalate, and I'm talking about de-escalate, not, <laughs> not set the guy up for a sucker punch. Right, There's right. a big difference because a lot of people, that's what they teach. That's mm -hmm. generally combatives. Also Krav Maga, a lot of it. It's I'm going to set you up till I'm going to hit you. Don't come any closer. Or what? Who, who in, 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 the, in the history of don't come any closer looked at the person and went, oh, okay, and left. Right. I don't want any trouble, man. Oh, I'm sorry. You look like somebody who wanted trouble. I do you know somebody who wants trouble? No, yeah, the guy down. Who the fuck answers like that? It, it's not right. So none of that shit works. And a lot of people think that they're de-escalating because, because they're saying, I don't want any trouble, so I'm not provoking. Yeah, no, 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 you're very much provoking. 
Because if I'm pissed at you, even if I'm a good person having a bad day, my answer is going to be, well, you found trouble now. What yeah. the fuck? And I'm going to get into my diatribe. And then you're going to give me more commands and you're going to piss me off because you're not fucking listening to me. And you just did something that upset me. You don't want to, don't, you know, give me the time of day. And at the end of the day, every human being on earth, I don't give a fuck who you are. Even psychopaths, they want to be seen and they want to be heard. Yeah. They want to be me feel like they fucking exist. Hey man, I exist. You bumped me. You kept on walking. <laughs> Now, I know you might not have noticed it, but fuck, that's the last straw for me, man. Why? Because nine out of the 10 people in my life treat me like I don't fucking exist. You're not doing it to me too. Hey, what the fuck's your problem? What, man, you fucking blah, blah, blah. Well, at least I exist now. You fuck him and they be not giving me the chance. Yeah. But if the guy turns around and go, hey, bro, what's up, man? How can I help you? Well, fuck, you did this, you did that. Sorry, let me fix it. Let me pay for it. Let me move my car. Let me apologize to the person. How can I fix it? This is how you can fix it. Okay. Done, finished, no more violence. Why? I got an issue I want resolved. Hear me out, man. Give me a chance. Don't tell me what to do. It's not about calm down. Everybody's picking on calm down. It's not about calm down. You can tell the guy, hey, man, have some cake. Fucking tell me to have cake. That's not time for fucking cake. Don't be thinking of cake. It's not the cake. You're telling me what to do. Don't fucking tell me what to do. Tie my shoes, don't tie my shoes. Ah, you know what? That's the issue. In this situation, you can't make it about you. You got to make it about me. Why? I'm in my ego. I'm pissed. If I'm angry, I'm in my ego. If I'm emotional, I'm not logical. I'm not reasoning yet. You got to get me there. You got to kind of snap me into my funk, but without going, hey, you know, you're, you're being a little bit emotional right now. I'm going to fucking deck you. But if you go, hey, man, what's up? Let me become emotional with him. Not on a bad perspective, on an understanding perspective. What's up? How can I help you? What do you need, man? Well, this or that. Now, the bad guy, you don't need anything. So saying, how can I help you to a person who's antisocial, who chose you, who's there to victimize you and not, they don't have an issue they want resolved. Well, they're either going to continue to set you up because they want to move you to a secondary location or they want you to look somewhere else so they can jack you or whatever, or they're going to reveal themselves right away. You're beyond help now, you piece of shit. You know exactly what you did. They're going to deflect your question and keep going with the aggression. And at that point, you know. But if I say to somebody, how can I help you? And they say, you're beyond help now, you piece of shit. Or they say something like, you know exactly what you did. I'm going to fuck you up. Blah, blah. I don't know exactly what I did, but I, I, we're done now. I can't. That's too much. Right. Like now I hit you. Right. Now I'm going to hit you. But that type of situation, that's like 10% of the issues that happen in the world. Road rage and all of that shit. That's, that's horrific. A kid I taught in Toronto watches, he was like nine years old. He watched his father die in a road rage situation that his father wasn't even involved in, man. He was just being a good Samaritan. Two other guys get into a fight. They're blocking the traffic. They're getting out. They're doing their thing. The father gets up. His kid's in the back seat. Doesn't want to fight. He's being like, hey, guys, you know what? Blah, blah, blah. Boom. Takes a knife to the gut for his troubles right there and then. Dies. That, none of that is necessary. The road rage incident is not necessary. But you can't tell the road rager that. There's a certain amount of logic that has to come into play. Why? No one can hear me when I'm road raging. That's, that's for starters. Except if there are people in the car with me. They can fucking hear me. These are the people I'm abusing. Not the guy in his car. And let's say the guy in his car can hear me. Has it ever fucking worked? Hey, asshole, learn how to drive. You know what, buddy, you're right. Fuck. I suck at driving. I shouldn't even be in the car. Yeah, I'm going to go take some lessons. Thank you for pointing it out, man. You think this guy's going to go learn how to drive? It's never going to fucking happen. What, do you, what response? In a million, do you think you're going to get if you tell somebody to fuck off or learn how to drive or you get aggressive with them? You think they're all of a sudden going to turn around and have a change of lifestyle because you, some fuck in the street they've never seen, yelled at them and said something? No, on a logical level in a million years. And you know what? When you say it to people and they're in the logical brain, they laugh. Ha <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. Hey, yeah, but you're going to do it. And, and you've done it. And I've done it. And it's fucking stupid. And the second my logical brain went, oh, shit, it is stupid. I stopped doing it. My logical brain won't allow me to road rage. I haven't road raged in over a decade or more now. Like I'm going 36 years old, I think it was last time, or 37. Why? Because it, 
I was damaging my own car, man. It got to a point I was thinking, who's paying for that? Who pays for the computer you just smashed? Because the inanimate object wasn't turning on, right? And then your brain starts to go, oh yeah, don't be a moron. It's gonna cost you. So you, And then you have to go, okay, if you're truly a martial artist or a, you know, a, a, a self-devoted practitioner of whatever that is supposed to enhance you and evolve you as a human being, you gotta ask yourself, where the fuck is this anger coming from? It sure as hell isn't the computer. That's gotta be coming from somewhere, man. That is deep rooted shit. I, I'm not a primate. I don't get angry at walls and punch walls. I'm not a fucking gorilla. I'm a human being. I have something above the gorilla. 3% more DNA that's different that makes me this and not that. Why am I punching walls and computers and cars? Why am I yelling at people in the street? That's not rational. I gotta look inside. Now, I don't have the tools to look inside. Who can teach me how to do that? A fucking professional, a therapist that specializes in the shit I went through in my life. What'd you go through? This, this, and this, and this. So I asked the therapist, do you know anything about fucking trauma? Because a lot don't. A lot of therapists don't. And that's, they have their specialties. You got to find one that specializes. And then you got to, they got to have empathy because you got 60% of them won't. You got to be dealing with psychopaths doing that work. They're great at it, maybe, because they want to be the best whatever. But at the same time, now nah, I need somebody to feel me, man. So I can learn because I feel. So if I feel and you feel, you can give me tools. But if you don't feel and I feel, you're not going to give me the, your tools aren't going to work for me. Yeah. Right? No, it, it's, it's what's, what's key about that is just uh, people, when, when people actually recognize that they don't want to continue this way. You know, like you said, like uh, probably like that 36 at that, that time, that was probably the trigger for you to say, you know, what? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, and, I, that was... and, I, and I've seen it. I've seen it with clients and stuff where they, where they come in and they tell you about how they used to be. And one of the things that I can say, like uh, uh, an approach like you, like the old approach, you know, on there, what's really interesting is when people see real violence, like, like when you're showing them real violence and you're showing them just how fragile the human body can be um at times and they come in and they well i don't want to do that you know that's a, i love i love when they say that they, they just want to learn how to you know kick ass yeah. but they don't understand that once they cross that physical plane things can can just go awry all right one, one of the videos i used to use all the time i haven't used it in a while um there's a video you probably remember the the Baz root and self-defense videos uh and they're, i still they're, don't know if he was joking or not that's i don't know either but you know what was really interesting i'd use that and and i'd always tell people you know, why are you laughing? Like they to watch it and they laugh at it. I go, you're laughing because you know, not because of what he was showing wasn't effective. It was damn good shit, but you knew it was in the wrong context. Bingo. Then I heard an interview nice. with him. There's an, there's an interview that I heard him in and it was just stellar. And I'm, I'm hoping to get him, uh, you know, in for an interview. So he tells an interview, I think he was in, he was either in Copenhagen or Amsterdam at a bar and these Algerian guys gave him a hard time. And he provoked it. He, he let them, you know, he easily could have walked out. He easily could have de-escalated and he didn't. So he goes out back of the bar, beats the crap out of two of them. I mean, like leaves them bleeding on the ground, brain bleeds. He's thinking, oh shit. He talks about spending a terrified night in his hotel room, waiting for the cops to come for him. And then he finds out, you know, that never, it never happened, but he really, it was a realization that, you know, after the fact He's, he's understanding where he's at and he's going, I, there was no need for me to do that. I willingly participated. I've got myself in a world of shit right now and I don't know what to do, you know? And I thought it was one of the most honest, um, admissions yeah. that I'd heard, especially from a guy like that, that didn't need to say, you know, he doesn't need to tell that story. You know, it's no. not like anything was there, but it was, it was really cool. And, and so the, you go from seeing that. So it, nobody's yeah. immune to this. Nobody's immune no. to it. You know, I've, I've been very fortunate that when I did my knucklehead stuff early on that I didn't I, I, either I didn't get seriously, grievously hurt and that I didn't inadvertently kill somebody over some stupid, you know, incident that made no sense. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's it's really it, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting that you you get to this point and you just you really if you're serious about the subject. It, it ends up like this, you know, I mean, the, 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 and, and people need to understand if this is their first introduction to you, 
listen, if you want to learn, if you want to learn the hardcore shit, if you want to learn how to do it, this man can teach you that. It's just, oh, it's that's the easy stuff. It's, it's, it easy is. and it's in there and, and it's there. But what you really need to know is when would it ever be useful to you? And that's the key, you know, to show this stuff. And, and there is a time and a place, it's a very rare event. Where, where that type of information is useful and putting in the context that you just put it in the idea of that person being the barrier between you and the rest of your life, uh, right. and the people you care about, that's, that's what you have to tap into people. So they truly understand when and where anything like that would ever be, um, you know, justified, useful and necessary. Exactly. <laughs> and usable in a sense that you have, you actually have the opportunity to use those skills. Yeah. Right. Again, to go back to what we were talking about earlier, we were talking about women specifically and being murdered 97% of the time by an intimate partner and the vast majority of the time it's in their homes where, they're the, where they face the most threat and danger. Um, it, these types, the type of violence they face outside of the everyday domestic abuse where, where, where you're, you're being the physical side of the f- domestic abuse anyway, but that too comes with grooming. That too comes with a, um, a launch of it, at, at first love bombing uh, 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 and, and things are going all peachy rosy until the person has their first snap moment. And then the individual, the woman is left in shock. How could you? And then he breaks down, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry trend starts she'll forgive him because of the last nine months of not one issue he's never done that before he has been going through stress at work lately justification narratives the excuses Mm -hmm. right the gaslighting is starting she's not seeing it she's in love I'll, i'll forgive him this one incident until three months from now and between those three months it's all over the love bomb again and then those three months become two months and those two months becomes one month and that one month becomes one week and that one week becomes one day and that one day becomes every day she's getting that beating. And by that time, there's no amount of physical, unless she makes the drastic decision that I'm fucking done with this, which is so rare because most people, you know, that's another thing that I'm glad is coming out more. Why doesn't she just leave? You know, any if you're saying that you don't, you know nothing. You don't, you can't. Your your level of ignorance is like just. You know what? You're so ignorant. Just it's better that you keep your lips together, man, yeah. because you're it, it. You're not. It's not. You can't just fucking leave. It isn't about just leave. The whole there's a threat. There's a whole. This individual isn't just beating her at home. Outside in the community, he's this. Everybody loves him. He's a fucking narcissist. Every, even her family will take his fucking side over her. He made sure of that. That's the game, man. That's the assault. The assault isn't the punch. So that's not what she needs to defend against, regardless of what martial arts or self-defense she goes to with the black eye and the look at what he did to me. Okay, let's get on the mats and show you some locks and let's hammer fist the pad. Let's put all your anger. That's just not what she fucking needs. Yeah. It'll do good on a foie level. But the second she's back home, she's the victim again. All of that lifestyle has been poured back. It's not a stranger. It's her husband. There's there's a whole process to it that brought the victim to this point. That's physical domestic abuse. Then you've got every other other type. Rape is mostly committed, again, by people, again, by, by, by People they know by an intimate partner, an ex, a brother. It's not the stranger. That's five, six, seven percent of the time a woman is raped by a stranger in an alley or in a bar or in her car at night. Or that's such a tiny percent. And even that tiny percent is completely avoidable and preventable by any means. If you know anything about how they hunt, where they hunt, and what they're looking for. If you have that understanding and you work with that understanding, fuck it. They're never even going to look at you. Why? Because they don't look for that type. They're looking for a specific type. And if you no longer fit in that category, which inadvertently many do without even knowing, right, then you're okay. And so they're not looking at you. So we've taken care of about 66% of opportunity crimes 
technically speaking, gone, out the window, poof, done. So what are the odds? We've reduced it to two, 3% of the time it's gonna be a stranger, just with a simple level of awareness and understanding, let alone anything physical. So the rest of the time, it's somebody they know. And if it's somebody they know, most of the time, right, young girls are getting raped. How are they getting raped? They got drugged. They drank a bit too much at a party. They passed out. A guy took advantage of them, right? They were blah, blah. It's, right? it's not, hey, bitch, come here. Oh, okay, let me do my move now, right? You don't have that time. Right. You're being, you're being, it's a circumstantial situation where you don't have all of your, right? Why? Because that's when you were vulnerable. Who the fuck is going to go after a woman who just came out of the gym and she's built like fucking China from back in the 80s, right. wearing a tank top, showing off grabs? Who's going after her? Nobody. Not, no, the predators don't even see her, right. right? So who do they see? They see my mom. And my mom ain't going to go to no gym and start fucking bucking and rolling people at the age of 74 years old. Right. Oh, nobody rapes 74. No, they do. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. If you're saying that again, you're ignorant. And there's a lot of ignorant self-defense instructors because they don't they don't know. And they'll deny it, and they'll fight you on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, they, they, so, they, they think they think it's a sexual thing. They think it's a, a pretty they don't understand it's a power thing and it's a yeah. domination thing. And it's, a, and it's not about the, the person. They're looking for the right victim. And what you're talking about is key. You know, I mean. If women can understand, you know, especially within their circles, you know, the the personality types to avoid, you know, to to or at least monitor and know, you know, there, that goes prevent. I mean, I remember when you were telling me how you guys that you know really help them understand within their circles, identifying, you know, potential threats, yeah, potential threats and just you understand, need, you know, and that and then now you have now you have something that's useful, you know, yeah. now they have something that they can they can just apply. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's it. We, cause we all have, you know, within our circles, we all have that one person who's a little bit off, you know, right, that, that, that's in there. Yeah. Right. And, and it hasn't happened yet, but you see the potentiality for it. Right. And, and yeah. You, know, you act accordingly, you know? Absolutely. And, and having a, a general understanding of these red flags helps a person establish a relationship boundary now with these types of people because you go okay well now i know what kind of person that is i'm teaching my kid that from now he's got a couple of friends that unfortunately i met the parents and and it's like i'm not a therapist but i know a shitload enough to be able not to diagnose but to tell you that there's like a 90 percent chance that individual is either borderline or narcissist full-on narcissist or a sociopath or a, based on certain red flags and criteria and right so um the kid's parents are that way and you can see it in the kid's behavior and how he treats my kid but my kid is friends with him my kid has a lot of empathy this kid has very very limited empathy um there's nothing you could do about it because Nothing has been done. He's not violent, but right. he's rough, never shares. Uh, 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 uh. He's a user. He manipulates. He'll take, 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 never give back. I promise, I promise. He'll never get it back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and my kids, I, he sees, and I explained it to my kid. I told him, look, here's what's going on. This, this, and the other thing. And you want to be his friend? I get it. Be his friend. But understand what category to place him in. Don't get disappointed when he doesn't give you things back. Don't get disappointed when he lies and you find out. That's who he is. That's what he's going to do. If you want him in your life, that's that's what you're going to get. And so if you understand what you get, you're going to be, you're going to have your boundaries. And he started learning because at certain points I heard him. He was saying something. The kid wasn't responding. After three, four tries, my, he was completely ignoring my kid. My kid just hung up on him. Boom, click. The other kid calls back. So now my kid's saying, okay. More guys. Before he was like, why aren't you responding to me? Hey, how can, hey, why, hey. And he would persist. And then I'm like, buddy, don't grovel. He's not really. The more you grovel, the more he's going to, right? You're, that's what he wants. And it's not his fault right now. It's not, that's why I don't, right? I, sometimes I let my kid play with these kids and understand him because sometimes another kid needs a kid with empathy to learn from a bit more, you know? Right. It's not right. his fault. I, I feel bad. But at the same time, I don't want my kid to hurt or to fall victim to that type because it chips away at him, at in an individual, much like a woman much like anybody who lives in an abusive relationship. And a lot of times because we are either born into it or it started off in a relationship, 
and it mimics stuff that we've been through in the past, we don't realize we're being abused. A lot of women are raped, don't realize they're being raped. A lot of husbands rape their wives, they don't realize they're raping their wives. And life goes on. But what does that do to the subconscious? What does that do to the person when they go to work and how they interact with other human beings and how they portray certain characters that resembles the characters of her husband when he treats her a certain way? What are the triggers that occur? Do they understand? No, the triggers just happen and they start to judge and manifest justification narratives as to why and it all falls apart. For example, th I, <laughs> this is gonna, this is a hard one. Typical family. I don't know if we spoke about this one last time. You got a man and a woman. They've been married X amount of years. They got the kids, the general situation, right? Um, long story short, just to make a point in the story. Um, and I can't tell you how common this is, when I, especially when I tell women. So you got the husband. He's, it's a Wednesday night. He feels like being intimate with his wife. She's not in the mood. So she turns him down. He insists by doing the normal playful stuff they do to get her in the mood. She says, look, honey, you know what? I've got to wake up early tomorrow. We got to get the kids to school. Can we save it for the weekend? Right? So he's like, oh, okay. He hops and puffs, turns around, closes the light, gives her, her back. They go to sleep. They wake up the next morning. Um, he's silent treat, treating treatment, right? So he's not saying anything, right? He's not aggressive. He's not nothing. Just a bit of silent treatment, but there's not time to talk because they're getting ready for work and they got to get the kids ready. So in between the high fives in the hallways, whenever she asks him a question, whatever, he gives one word answers. Oh, honey, is everything okay? Did you not sleep up? No, I'm fine. Goes about his day, right? right. Um, when he comes home and he is home, he makes sure that she can hear him, you know, shut the doors a little harder, close the fridge door a little harder, right? When he sits down, he breathes out and sighs. Is everything okay, honey? Yeah, fine. Turns on the TV. So that kind of shit goes on for a couple of days and slowly it dwindles and everything goes back to normal. Life goes on. Friday, Saturday rolls around. It's the weekend. She promised me sex. Hey, baby, blah, 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 blah. She's not in the mood though. Ah, fuck him. She's really not in the mood. She's tired. Just, I don't fucking feel like it. But in the back of her mind, she, the last time she said no, she went to two days of silent treatment, the whole shit like that. Fuck, if I want to go through that. Plus, I said no, and I promised them if I break a promise, the two days is going to be four or five days. Now, that's not a conscious process right there and then that she's having. That's all on the instant in the background. So what does she do? She says, okay. And she has sex with her husband. She'll fake the orgasm. He's going to be very happy. And the day goes on. And that's rape. And a lot of people go, that's the, how is that rape? Because she consented. She didn't consent because she was attracted to him. She didn't consent out of desire, need, love. She consented out of fear. Fear of what? Emotional and fucking psychological abuse. Silent treatment. Shutting of doors. One word answers. <sighs> Every time he fucking sits down and gets up. He even neglected the children at dinner the last few nights and took it out on fucking them. I don't need my kids going through that because I said no to giving my husband sex. So she sleeps with him. It's not violent. He didn't force her. He didn't say, you better, you fucking bitch, or you know what's good for you. He politely asked and she said yes and they had sex. But that's rape. And when I tell this to especially women that are 40 years old and older in workshops or rape, they tell me, well, honey, if that's rape, then everybody I know has been raped. Go fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah. That's fucking insane. Now you don't, she doesn't realize he's been raped. He doesn't realize he's raped. But what does that do to her as a human being that she concedes to something she does not want out of fear of retribution? And how is that going to seep into other areas of her life at work with her boss? You want to work an extra night? Well, fuck if I say no, is he going to do this and that and that? Yeah, sure, I'll work the extra hours without pay. Okay, you become a doormat, you become, it, you develop that personality and it seeps, it leaks everywhere. It's not just a self-contained situation, man. That's trauma. Now that's not just one fucking night. She's married to this guy for 30 years. Yeah, 30 years of that. Plus he has road rage. So every time they're in the car, she has to hear, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, sorry. It's not you I'm yelling at. Yeah, but I'm the one fucking here. Now couple that to the rape. Now, couple that to the fact that he also, you know, punches walls and computers at home. Or uh, if he had a bad day at work, he comes in and it's everybody's got to fucking walk on eggshells because daddy's not in the mood to play tonight. 
How are the kids growing up around that? How are they going to react to bullies at school now with a father like that? Who yeah. doesn't think that he's doing anything wrong? That's just me. I'm going through that. Well, man, I don't need to go through it because you're going through it, brother. Just, let's talk. Let's fucking figure this shit out. But I don't want to live on eggshells. I don't need you to snap at me because of your boss. That's misdirected anger. And if you're doing it to me, that's the guy who's getting into street violence. That's the guy who's going to beat somebody up in a parking lot over a parking spot, over a spilt fucking drink. And there's violence. There's fucking the whole shit social root cause of violence. None of that is necessary with the understanding where you go shit. Guy gets in my face. Hey, fuckhead. Now look at that. He doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. Okay, he's angry at something. Hey, buddy, what's up? I don't need to... Would you call me? It's not personal. Who cares if you call me a fuckhead? Roadhouse, man. Patrick Swayze. <laughs> what if somebody calls your mother a cocksucker? Is she? <laughs> if she is, he's right. You don't need to get upset and beat him up. But he didn't say anything wrong. He ain't lying. And if she's not and he doesn't know, who gives a shit? You know she's not. Everybody knows she's not. Who cares what he fucking thinks? What if other people believe? Who gives a shit? Yeah. Do they know? No. She's not. So who cares? If you're not secure enough with you, you have, then you're going to have to lash out. <laughs> it's the only way. That's your coping mechanism. That's your fight response. Now, why the fuck are you reacting that way? Introspection right, right. is key. Self-defense, man. It starts with the self. Self-fucking defense. Nobody's going to mess you up more than you. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Nobody fucked my life up more than me every single time. Even the people who were there to fuck me up, I let them fuck me up in that moment. I allowed that to happen. I put myself there. I, and everything that fell apart always had different circumstances. If I'm, I have like 15, 20, 30, 40 girlfriends, I got divorced three fucking times. It's not their fault. It's not them. And fuck, it's me. Why? I'm the common, what? Oh Every God. woman on earth is insane and I'm the guy? I'm the, no, I'm a, no, no, that wasn't the fucking case. Sure, they had their issues. Everybody has their issues, but it was my issues that got in the way, right? right? Now, if they want to take accountability or responsibility for theirs, good for you, man. And if they don't, that's not my business anymore. But in the time being, I did not handle any of those situations appropriately. Not a fucking one on my end. So, so I know my place. Accountability is such a huge part of self-defense and not in a blame the victim. But if I'm wearing a gold Rolex walking down the street of Mexico, in Mexico City, right? Yeah. Now, yeah, right? And that, that's, that's something that pisses me off a lot, especially from um, in the female self-defense environment right now. There's a whole thing that... Um, don't teach women to defend against rapes. Teach men not to rape. Exactly. What, thinking? exactly. what That is the dumbest, most uneducated fucking thing. If you're saying that, you got no business in the world teaching self-defense. You shouldn't even be in the realm of self-defense if you're uttering such bullshit. It's, it's, it's infuriating because you can't teach men. You can teach men not to rape up to a certain point. That's it. Empathy. Boom. You got it. I can teach you. Don't do it. Why? It's because of this, this, and this shit. I get it. And they're not going to do it. It's not hard. Why? They got empathy. They get it. If they don't get it and they break, there's no amount of fucking education that's going to make a river. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's wrong. Oh, nobody told me it was wrong. Like, tell a bank robber not to rob a bank. Don't right. buy security in fucking banks. Just teach people not to rob banks. What planet are you from? Where, what world do you, where, who says that? And, and like it drives me nuts. So no. You, you, yeah, we had a, <laughs> so here we had a, a, she was, she won Miss America, but she was a former uh, Miss Nevada, Nia Sanchez. And she told us a story uh, where she got up and, you know, they asked the questions. What do you think? Well, she had a Taekwondo background and everything. She talked about her martial arts background. And she said, I think it's really important that women, you know, you know, understand self-defense. She got scared skewered on twitter and everything with exactly what you're saying like, oh it's the wrong message to send out you know the, the right message is you know men shouldn't rape women well yeah you know i you, people shouldn't rob my house but i'm gonna lock my doors you know oh, yeah um, but- it, it's just it's just asinine you know and, and then i get people you know I, I i would have women tell me well i should be able to run at 10 30 at night with my earbuds on and you know you know be unmolested and i go yeah you should be able to 
but you can't, but you're not. But reality is reality. And, and you are now profiling as a really, you know, uh, preferable victim, Yeah. you know, by, by doing that, you're willingly putting yourself in that position. So, you know, the rea- for me, I, I think my, my, my job, and I, I think you'd probably agree is I can't, I can't handle, you know, uh, helping you out with the way you wish the world was, but it's my job to tell you, I got to prepare oh, for the world the way it is. Yeah. And as unpleasant exactly. as that is, we can still put together a really good program that will minimize the chance of this stuff ever affecting you. Um, yes. Will it be inconvenient sometimes? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, su- does it suck that we have to do some of these things? Absolutely. Such but, you life. know, again, you know, your message of, but it allows me to go home to those that I love, you know, allows yeah. me to keep, keep living that great life. And so that's the motivation for doing it. That's the ignition of why, you know, why would we even look at the subject? I mean, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments about, about this because this is a very different approach. Um, well, you can't get, I mean, look, a person who rapes at the level that they're talking about, and I'm not talking about the teenager at the party. Yeah. Education motherfucker that, that, Right. But not always, because if that teenager is a, a, already a, a budding sociopath or, or has or was born with psychopathy. Right. You can't. This, this is not education is not going to do it. He's not fucking doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit about your laws, your education. Your, he's not there. That's not who this person is. You're, 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 it's like teaching a person who's born with no legs how to run without giving him prosthetics or any other. Right. I fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm literally on my stump. Man, I can't run, right? So they can't. So it's it, it's medically, scientifically not possible. Now you reach, like I said, later on, the realm of 20 and 21 year old, narcissist, Machiavellians, antisocial person, sociopathy, psychopathy. There's no education. There's no re-education. They are incapable. That's it's a done fucking deal. If they this if they're gonna rape, they're gonna rape. There's you can't get rid of these people. You cannot rid the world today press the button go sociopathy is deleted narcissism is deleted because if you do that you'll get rid of a lot of rape and abuse and all kinds of shit hell we shouldn't live in a war where it's 20 in a world where it's 2022 and two countries are bombing the fuck out of each other how primitive is that it's 2022 what are you doing <laughs> right yeah. it's but we're doing it it's, it's a well i should be allowed to live in a country where bombs aren't going to drop yeah but sometimes you're fucked. Why? Because the guy up there is going, no, he's a psychopath. He's a social, he's a narcissist. He's doing that. And guess what? You put him in charge. So what the fuck do you think is going to happen at the end of the day yeah. with this person in charge? Here's your red flags. <laughs> so yeah, it's not, you're not, you're not going to abolish violence. It's, it's in the human genome. You can't get rid of it. You're not going to, we're not getting rid of rape. Rape is, is unless we evolve into a completely different species, like literally a whole other level, like we're talking Spielberg shit, right? Rape is going to continue as long as third world countries exist and are being oppressed by religious beliefs that render a female less than a second and third fucking uh, 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 civilian or society, literally third class civilian, right? You're not getting rid of rape. You're not, unless you, right? Now, you can get rid of all the rape, like the husband who rapes his fucking wife at night by giving her all that little fucking treatment. Why? Because if he's got empathy and he, you make him realize that, if somebody told me that and I used to do that, I'd be, holy fuck. You know what? That stops now. And I would, I would be groveling at my wife's feet, groveling for forgiveness. I didn't know. I'm so sorry if I made you feel, holy shit, honey. You know what? Fuck, if you want to leave me now, do it. I deserve it. Fuck off, go. Hey, if you just see me as, because I get it. I have empathy, man. So, so I can revert and go, wait a minute. If you, if I didn't know, because that was, the, Hey man, I was a kid. I grew up in the eighties. I used to call people fag. Hey, you faggot. It's, it's fucking horrible. It's horrible. I didn't know. I didn't compute. Everybody was, it's just, it was such a normal insult, like fucking whatever that people would use or asshole, but you know, you just throw it into the mix without thinking, without going, Hey, wait a fucking minute. You know, but it takes a certain amount of maturity and understanding and fucking empathy over any of maturity or understanding because my 10 year old boy gets it that hey, that's another human being, man. What's it my fucking business? What he does, if it's consensual, what do I get? It's not like that, nothing to do with me. And it was stupid. And I didn't even understand why, because I didn't hate homosexual. I didn't, I wasn't homophobic. I was just using the slur because it was part of my. Yeah. 
It was right. culturally, yeah. it, cult, culturally it was accepted. How does that become fucking culturally acceptable, right? Yeah. In, in a civilized world in the 19, where in the 80s we claimed to be whatever the fuck we were, and now we are claiming to be whatever the fuck we are, and we still have like 16 countries putting these people to death. Yeah. Come on, that shouldn't happen, but it does. So is rape. So yeah. fuck your stupid asinine shit of, oh, teach men not to rape. Yeah, to a certain degree. Those with empathy, you'll reach no problem. Those without, good luck. Yeah. Good fucking luck. Well, dude, That's this is this has been outstanding. I, I just I think this is a good place for us to uh, stop the first one because I know sure. we're going to get requests for more. Uh-huh. Um, sure. And thank you for your freaking patience with my technical inabilities here. Bro, um, I am I am worse than you. So truly, this was magnificent for me. I was like, wow, that almost went off without a glitch. <laughs> my whole life yeah. is a technical difficulty. So, well, dude, I really appreciate I really appreciate it. And I, I, I hope there's a chance where uh, we can actually run into each other one day and actually uh, do a face to face. That'd be great. I'd, I'd really like to to do that. And uh, listen, dude, I wish you all the best. And um, so much please, for please I, I will if, if it, you know, with the questions and everything, the follow ups, I will uh, absolutely uh, let you know. And uh, yep. we got all, all the things, all of your stuff will be in the show notes and, and, we'll, and we'll do that. But uh, why don't we go ahead and stop this here for the well, see, he didn't disappoint. Now, listen, Rich is doing some great work with he and his wife. He's also doing some excellent work. And check out you know, some of the videos that he's done with Safe International on Chris Roberts. They've really put together some good programs. And they really give a shit about making sure women get trained properly and to try to give them all the information they can to deal with that incredibly difficult subject that we talked about in this interview. So, uh, I, you know, once again, I, I thank him for giving me the time, also being patient with the uh, multiple uh, interviews that we had to do to get this right. I hope you enjoyed it. Please put the comments in. Let us know what you think, uh, you know, good or bad. We're always interested in hearing. And remember, if you are ready for your self-protection training to take a whole new level, get a real plan together, go to timlarkin.com and give us your email and we'll get you started off on a free master class. Also, please share this with your friends. Please join uh, and subscribe to the channel and let people know that we interview subject matter experts like Richard. Uh, It really helps grow the channel. All the best.